Now to close the skin on this model, we can use either interrupted or continuous patterns. The, the simple interrupted pattern and the simple continuous pattern actually start the same. So we're gonna come just almost at the edge of the incision, just get skin. We don't wanna get any extra subcutaneous tissue. Support the needle, rotate it out through the skin. Again, get just under the skin. Come out about five, four to five millimeters. Pull the extra tissue through, suture through. Put the needle holders in the middle. Around once, that gives us a square knot. Tighten that down. It will loosen some, but that's fine because the second throw will get it. Make sure that we're forming a nice square knot and that's going to pull that down nicely. The needle holders in the middle, around once again and then the fourth row will lock it. If this were an interrupted pattern I'd cut both ends of the suture right now and be done uh, but because we're going to form a continuous pattern I'm just going to cut the short end and we'll continue on with the long end. Again the simple interrupted and the simple continuous start exactly the same way. To do this I want to go Again, if my, if my bites from the incision are four to five millimeters, I'm going to go five to seven millimeters along the incision line. Support, bring that together. Try to make sure that your bite distance is similar from side to side and, and from along the incision. In this case, because the incision is close enough, I can do both sides at once. If I'm not sure that that's a good plan, then it's certainly fine to go through one side, stabilize, bring it out, and then go through the other side, stabilize, and bring the needle out. You can appreciate that my bites are fairly even, both from the incision back and along the suture line, so it gives me a chance to have a good look at that. And you should always stop and evaluate and see where you are and make adjustments. Not every suture line is perfect, uh, but with time you can certainly improve the effectiveness and the evenness of your sutures. Notice that to effectively get the suture bites going across the incision, my needle holder needs to be parallel with the incision. If I'm working at an angle that will make it much more difficult to get a nice even suture line. Here again, because it's close enough together, I can get both sides at once. Or I can do one side at a time. To finish the simple continuous knot, we're going to go ahead and put the needle holders in the middle again of the loop around the needle holder one time, pull that loop through, back in the middle of the loop. In this case, if I rotate the needle holder over, it will support that. Again, making sure that it stays a nice square knot. Back in the middle of the loop, rotate the small loop over. Tighten that down, making sure it stays square, back in the middle, rotate the loop over, and I open the jaws each time to equilibrate that loop. And then when you look at this incision line, because these are a nice 180 degree angle, it tells me that they're going to be square knots as opposed to slip knots. Cut these at about a centimeter. And if you look at that, we've got just a little puckering there because uh, I didn't get that one quite tight enough, but those other ones are nice and straight. So now, once we're done, the nice part about these pads is that we can just go in and practice removing sutures. So we can remove them, you can cut every other suture, and the loop, use your thumb forceps to remove that suture material. Come down into our deeper layer. And again, remove those.
and we can start over. So other than uh, where we manipulate some of the sub Q, and you can barely see these holes here in the skin, uh, but you can suture this multiple times, uh, 10, 15 times closing this particular incision, and then you can make a new incision.